Hello everyone, Kelly Bear here and today I am with you for my first ever tarot tube tag. And you're like, huh, what do you mean by that? You've done loads of tarot tags over the years. Yes, yes, I have done loads of tarot tags. I have done them, but I've not created them. This is the first tarot tag I have made myself. My channel will be seven next month and this is the first one I've created. I did have um, a video that I made become a tag which was the five decks you can't live without back in 2016 and that's there are hundreds of videos on that <laughs> not from me I mean from other people but I um I, I that wasn't meant to be a tag I didn't create a hashtag I simply made a video and loads of people really seem to just vibe with it is that what the kids say these days i feel really old when i say stuff like that kids people really seem to like enjoy it and made their own video responses which is very old school tube uh type youtube type of thing isn't it people just doing um unasked for vrs as, as anna astral uh, astral lady tarot calls them um so yeah this is my first one um it's called winter wardrobe tarot i was going to call it the tarot winter wardrobe but I feel like winter wardrobe tarot rolls off the tongue a bit easier. I don't know. I will workshop that. By workshop, I mean I will I will overthink it and then just whatever is underneath this video in the title is what I landed on. But at the moment, at the top of my paper, I have winter wardrobe tarot. Um, and this is all based around winter clothing. So decks related to um, each piece or item of clothing. Uh, and um, of course this is a winter tag it's not a holiday season tag it's not specifically a yuletide or christmas tag it is meant for the whole of winter so you've got a few months to do it if you're here in the northern hemisphere obviously in the southern hemisphere um you know that's flipped but i'm um, you know if you want to do that the tag now if you if you if you so choose then that's absolutely cool um so yeah i'm hoping people will join in with this we will see um it might bomb it might not <laughs> Um, and I have tried to stick to one deck for the most part, um, but for some of the prompts, more than one deck is necessary, and that's to get a full view of, like, to fully answer the question that I'm answering. Um, I mean, I could easily have picked multiple decks for each prompt, but the, obviously the whole point of these tags, these challenges, is to sort of really think about it and narrow it down. Um, and I have stuck to just tarot. There are no oracle decks here, there are no Lenormand, there's no playing cards, nothing. It's all tarot. Of course, your mileage may vary, and if you want to put in um, anything other than tarot, so if you do want to include oracle, if you do want to include Lenormand, you go ahead, fill your boots, uh, fill your, your, your snuggly, cosy winter boots. So um, I'm just going to jump in after all of that uh, preamble. And the first, uh, the first prompt, first question is base layers and th like your thermals. So um, I related this to um, which deck or decks um, are um, or were foundational to your tarot practice and how you read tarot today and and why and why are you choosing those decks for this prompt? Um, is it because um, they really helped you get a handle on the tarot system, really learn the tarot system? Is it because it's your favourite system to use and this is like the 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 one that started it all off? You know, so um, for me, I have three decks because I've been reading tarot on and off for about 26 years <laughs> so the first deck i ever bought my first ever ever deck um, and if you've been watching me for any length of time you will know it's the osho zen i trimmed mine about four or five years ago because i didn't like the um the keywords underneath and deck modding started to become a thing and i was like oh right okay yeah i'm just gonna like chop these off <laughs> and i took the rest of the borders off as well and i used a really nice large corner rounder on them and i really like the size and it's not a deck i read with often but it is a deck i read with exclusively for quite a long time at least two years i think my memory is a little i need to move my head out of the way so you can actually see the cards come on i'm hoping it's going to focus there we go so yeah this was i didn't know that there were you know, Smithwaite and Thoth and Marseille. I just thought tarot was tarot was tarot. I didn't know about the systems. 
um, and I just went with the prettiest one that was available in the shop that I went to um, because you know that I just want well, aesthetics right I want to go what I'm drawn by very visually orientated person and I wanted to go with what was appealing to me we want artwork that's appealing um, and yeah so that is what kicked it all off folks I'm just gonna have some more tea because I don't want it to go cold oh oh lovely so the next deck um, I got much much later and this was gifted to me I did ask for it it was on my Christmas wish list and it was gifted to me by my husband I think Christmas 2016 I think or Christmas 2017 I can't remember but it's if anyone recognizes these backs it is the gilded borderless edition of the tarot illuminati by Eric C Dunn and I Oh, woof when i saw this 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 deck i'll show you stop show don't tell can we or t show and tell rather um when i first saw this deck on tarot tube around the time that it was being released created and released i was just like whoa this kind of digital collage photography is really not my bag it is so over the top it is so busy it is so like I call it I call it visual vomit and I was just like oh hell no hell no um, and at this point I knew what Smithwaite was but I don't think I owned a single true like Smithwaite um, clone um, I did have the um, Canon Reed um, not Canon Reed sorry the um, Shaman Caselli beginners tarot set I've actually bought and give gift re-bought and gifted that deck two or three times because I was using that to learn Smith Waite and then I had friends that wanted to get into tarot and I would gift that deck to them and then rebuy the set <laughs> I even had the one where you can get um, a, a, a one version that you color in and the regular version you get two decks in the box I don't know if you can still get that but um, uh, it, I never knuckled down properly with the Smithwaite system because I think what happened, what it was, is I just didn't really jive with the artwork, and I didn't don't jive with the artwork, didn't jive with the artwork of this. Then I ended up in Mysteries, which is back where I bought this deck 26 years ago. It was still going at the time. I don't know. It did move location. I don't know if it's still at its new location, newish location, but I don't know if it survived the pandemic. But I saw this in there and at this point you could actually, they had display decks. They never used to have display decks. Back in the 90s they had a ring binder with the little plastic poly pockets and they would have a few cards from each deck that they had in stock in the shop. Um, so you didn't get to see all the cards and you would just have to pick off of that. So I picked this deck off of like... I don't know just a handful of cards which is really really tricky right because a lot of these car the cards in this are actually quite dark and negatively skewed um but when i opened the box for this one i was like oh god it's a bit much i don't know oh you know it's oh god um the digital collage is 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 a, is oh i don't know and the heads seem too big for the bodies um no i would like no 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 oh hell no still and then i was on my way home on the tube and i was thinking about it and then the next day i was thinking about it and a week later i was still thinking about it i think i mentioned it on my channel i think i have my channel at this point maybe and i was like did i have my channel by that point i can't remember and um i couldn't stop thinking about it and so I was like, Do you know what? I'm going to put it on my Christmas Christmas wish list and just see if if it if it, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. And my husband bought it for me. And oh my god, this deck really hammered in the tarot meanings for me for the Smithway. It really just I don't know why. It's visual vomit. I always joke lovingly that it you know I say I always always say it's got everything, including the kitchen sink and like the vacuum cleaner and the sofa. Like it's got everything in it. And I don't know. It was just so cram packed that it just really helped me knuckle down with the Smithwaite system. And what also help, what I would recommend is you get the complete guide to the Tarot Illuminati, which is the book that you buy separately from uh, by Kim Huggins, who also wrote Tarot 101, which is another good book for learning tarot. Um, well, in my opinion, I found it useful. Um, and this is the deck that I used with Tarot 101 for a lot of it. 
and um, that really really helped and I would say that you don't even have to have the Tarot Illuminati itself to use that book I would say that if you just want to use any Smithway deck that book is really really helpful um, and then the third deck isn't the is 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 the CBD Marseille now my first ever Marseille was the New Choice Tarot de Marseille by Rosario Solano. I had I never looked at Marseilles before that because I just thought they were fuck ugly, quite frankly, um, and I didn't understand why anyone would want to read with them or how anyone could possibly read with these sort of pippish... I mean, like, I would be like, what the hell? What the hell is that? What does that mean? What the fuck? No. Um, and... Although the um, the new choice was my gateway drug to Marseille and Pip decks, which are now my one true love, um, it's not the deck that I I ended up studying the Marseille with. I realised very quickly when I start when I picked up like um, uh, Yoav Bendov's book and when I picked up uh, Caitlin Matthews' book that I needed. Um, a, a, a more classic Marseille and I didn't want a reproduction like facsimile one I wanted one that was clean and clear and tidy and easy for me to read um, where the, all the symbolism was clear to see so I picked the, the CBD Marseille because I had you know, Bendoff's book so it made sense to pick up his, his um, deck and uh, yeah so this was the one that I really knuckled down with um, and I'm really grateful to it. I don't read with it that much anymore. I'm more inclined to read with the, like a noble A than I am with this. But um, yeah, I mean, again, it completely revolutionised this. I would say this one revolutionised the way that I read. So wow, 10 minutes just on the first prompt. But that it was one with three decks. So the second prompt is Ugly Christmas Sweater. And this is a novelty deck that brings you joy. Um, there were a few contenders for this deck, uh, for this prompt, um, but ultimately I picked my own deck, which is my um, my <laughs> neon edged um, uh, low black, low brow pop surrealist artwork deck that I created myself um, on a on a. a, a, a website similar to make playing cards but it's uk based um, and yeah and this just features a number of you know disparate artwork you know um and look how tiny the bloody titles came out this was meant to be a 12 um like font size i put in 12 or 14 does that look like 12 or 14 font size to you it's so tiny i couldn't even read it i can just about read it if i look closely so i've actually got the them in black and i have been considering going in on the cards that it's harder to read to go in with metallic pen and write it on um just so it's a bit more visible but yeah so this features all sorts of, of fun artwork and i call it a novelty deck because you know it's an, it is novel and the only one in the world of it exists i would never make this to sell for people to buy because it's not my artwork this was a made for my own charlie imner i have a piece of charlie imner artwork downstairs a print but like it's um a limited print um which was a wedding gift from my husband um i really um yeah oh my god i really really love it i really like it's just full of little creatures and it's just it just brings me joy like we've got a real diverse mixture of artwork but it's all lowbrow art and i love it um yeah so <laughs> i mean come on this is my little ace of cups look at his little face um so yeah we've got the lovers but yeah <laughs> oh, this is my nine of cups <laughs> getting a little greedy but yeah so this is my queen of swords sitting in the tree raving and I had so much fun making this. This, I collected this artwork. I saved the artwork for this deck on a Pinterest board over the course of about a year. 
and then I narrowed it down to 78 cards and not all of the artwork would fit into the card format and the, the quality of each card is not necessarily the best but my god like they print like some of them are a bit more grainy but you know what I love it I love it I love it and I and I keep it in this mad phone box that I that I um that I <laughs> that I uh <laughs> that I customized um with random crap including like a little pony and this lightning strike thing it was a key ring that used to actually make noise I need to see if I can I don't think I can replace the battery because it's stuck on and the rubbery finish on it has gone all like sticky which is gross and the little rubber ducky I had has fallen off I keep meaning to stick that actually it's fallen off twice at this point but I, really, I need to choose a different glue I need to use different glue to hot glue I think I need to use super glue on the little rubber ducky anyway the, book, the, the box doesn't matter. The box doesn't matter. Um, so the next prompt, prompt three, is winter coat, and this is your workhorse deck or your most used deck, at least currently, because this for me changes. My workhorse deck last year was my numinous tarot. I kept pulling that one, and I my next world tarot has been quite a workhorse for me this year as well. Um, but I do have one that I go back to again and again and again and the number of times I've had to hide it away because I end up pulling it I did hide my next world tar uh, my numinous tarot this year because I wanted to work with the next world tarot more and that worked because I have um, but it's the Sasarabito I have the shiny third printing I think it is I would love a linen cardstock version because the gloss drives me bananas even now. Um, I would love the travel edition. Oh my god, the travel edition. Oh, this is one of my favourite devils. I mean, everyone loves this fucking devil, right? But this, I, I come back to this again and again. I could also call this a hug deck. But oh, just there's just something. There's just something about it. It just it just gets me it just gets me i get it it hits me in the feels it's comforting without being cloying or trite or twee it's um fairly diverse it's got a great age diversity um you know yeah body diversity i don't really notice any disability in it but you know other than that like it's got pretty good disability a good pretty good representation the, again the emperor one of my favorite emperors i think of this to me this is don draper I've said that before. I just, I just love it. So yeah, this, this is a workhorse for me, and I've allowed myself to use it more again. <laughs> and I actually did part of my um, solar return birthday spread um, with with this deck. And the other one is actually one from someone here on TarotTube, which is our own, our, our Tom Benjamin, which is his multi Marseille um this is if i want a classic marseille deck now this is the one i go to i got this in like march i think it was march and this has been my go-to marseille i did i did break out the terrace serene quite a bit in the summer and uh, another one that you'll see but this for like a classic true i just want straight up marseille it's this one and i'll show you i was waiting for the thing um, so we've got disability and body diversity and um, different uh, people from all different um, backgrounds. Um, and yeah, I just I just love it. I think uh, Tom did a really good job. Um, and I hope that we get to see more diverse Marseille decks. I know that there are a couple being worked on that I know of, I think, um, one or two. Um, but yeah love it love it love it love it and it's an it's it's a it's an easier size for me to man manage and the card stock's really nice so those two are my like my workhorse we've got like a, a smith weight inspired but not true smith weight deck and then a um and then a uh a, a, a marseille the fourth prompt is snow boots and this is a deep dive deck that you can really sink into um, and i want to know what the reason for that is is it because it's like a whole different system like say the raven's prophecy not the raven's prophecy what's it called raven feelings deck uh, i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head at the moment but you know like something like the um chrysalis tarot for example has uh 
has its own kind of system you know you could do a deep dive with that the tower of the holy light is uh, would be considered a, a deep dive deck um for me and I, I i worked with it in the spring i haven't really worked with it much since but i did do a chunk of stuff with it in the spring and it's the voyager tarot these are the backs it's very glossy the cardstock is very sort of laminated um, but it kind of works with the whole like 80s this was created in the 80s this is a modern version of it a copy of it printing of it but you know it's very very glossy it's analog um um collage and i bought this because i really wanted a collage i really wanted the telesma tarot but i cannot afford the deck and then you know adding the shipping and the taxes and everything there was just it would have cost me you know like something like a hundred and thirty pounds hundred and forty pounds maybe more <laughs> i just don't have that money to drop on a deck of cards so um i got this and the reason i'm calling it a deep deep dive is you get the little white book which is pretty good actually as little white books go it's 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 got a, a decent amount of information in it but there is a a larger book which i'm only part way through where did i get through i only there we go Woo! okay <laughs> I'm only part way through like reading each card individually. I've read the odd card on its own when I've pulled a card and read it separately, but reading it cover to cover, I'm only like a part of the way in. So I have a long ways to go. There's another split there somewhere. I can't see it. Um, but yeah, so it's got this. And then I've also got a book of poetry that was inspired uh, by by the deck as well so it's got lots to um, dig into um, and so this is one for 2023 I would like to get back on to um, reading with more and digging into I'd also I almost picked the wildwood because I would as in like a winter for this prompt is in one that I want to work with more in the new year I did want to do that this year that didn't pan out um, but I really want to get a year in the wildwood the book so that I can work through it so I might purchase myself that book before the end of this year and consider doing that from the beginning of January I haven't decided yet um, the fifth prompt is hat and this is a deck that twists your melon it gets in your noggin and you really struggle with it like it's a problem it's a, it's like your head you can't get your head around it or you can't really connect with it again a couple of contenders for this but the one that i find most fun <laughs> is one that i don't really get i kind of do a little bit more now but i didn't at the time and i didn't for a long time and i do still think i could probably dig in with this one as well and that is the oh that's upside down what's going on the canon reed which is tarot this is a 90s printing this this deck is out of print and i have the borderless 90s printing the box is long gone because the lewen boxes back in the day were absolute bobbins and would just fall apart oh sorry pain should have warned you there'd be jubblies and all sorts in in this deck um other to thy eyes thine eyes um but yeah, I mean, at the time when I got this, I probably got this about two years after I'd gotten the Osho Zen. So we're looking at like 1998, maybe 1999, possibly. Um, and I have to admit, I was mostly drawn to the back because it was super witchy. And again, I chose the, the deck off of just a handful of cards that they had on display in the ring binder and of course they put like the most baller fucking cards in the ring binder and i didn't see the rest of the deck until i got home and i opened it and oh my god i mean some of the cards i actually quite like i really like the movement and the feel of the wind you can really feel the wind blowing in that card but the 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 core cards are basically the same artwork but the colors are switched for the season and then the you know obviously the suit item changes and i i, I always argued that that was quite lazy but apparently that is for a reason and it's that we um you know it's the same person moving through the seasons from what i remember someone explained to me like this is one of the cards that they had in the ring binder I mean, what 90s teenager isn't going to be like, hell's yeah, space tits, you know, like, I'm into it. <laughs> I mean, just tits in general. This was another one, more space tits. I mean, I was like, this is, 
this is right up my alley i mean hell yeah <laughs> i very very vividly remember the the, the the space boobs um but some of the I and mean, the moon was one of them it's a wild deck see so here you go here's another one of the court cards it's the same one the princess and it's got um different wording and then some of the cards are just just this was one that was in the i remember this one being in the uh in the ring binder isn't it funny how it just jumps back out at you but then there are cards like this where i'm like what no i know it's a shield but at the time i was like so it feels very disparate to the rest of the thing oh my god the death card was in the ring binder i mean this is metal as fuck it's so cool um but yeah where's some of the ones that were like making me go i'm sorry excuse me like i don't i, I wasn't really i don't mind this one so much now but like this is so like 90s 80s 90s the deck was originally printed in the in the 80s mine is a 90s copy because that's when i bought it um but yeah some of them <laughs> where's the one that i always show which i like the the fool card i just don't like his face i just don't like although he looks a bit like the guy that plays Meister Ky Meister Kyburn in Game of Thrones and is currently in Andor. The magician looks really angry. He looks a bit like Jaws from uh, James Bond. Like this one! This one I just was like, I don't, what? And I think, I can't remember, I think the elements are switched in this. So the, the um, swords are fire and the ones are air, but don't quote me on that. Um... <laughs> more space tits <laughs> space packs um where is the guy in the library there he is there he is the famous guy in the library but now i kind of really i used to have a love-hate relationship with this deck now it just it just amuses me and i kind of love it but i just i just can't get my head around it and it's i know if i took the time to get break out the book that's up there on the show i do still have the book and i do still have the fold out that came in the box with the spread on it i do still have that and now if i took the time i would probably understand it more but i'm also not really into the kabbalah and i have feelings around that whole thing as well so um I d i'm not in i don't want to like di dive into that as well and this deck is very kabbalah heavy anyway wow this is getting quite long uh number six uh is scarf and this is a hug deck for when you are in need of comfort or support okay so there are again a few contenders one of the most recent purchases that i did um that i made this year would be the um playful heart tarot uh the by kitten chops i love that deck and the artist is creating a marseille called the pipsqueak marseille i will I, I want that so much i will be getting that I will shut up and take my money basically but i don't think i'm going to surprise anyone with what my actual like tried and true hug deck is anyone want to guess anyone want to guess down below what it is before i say it <laughs> i'm really predictable folks tarot of the magical forest yes um these bbs are just the cutest it's a smithway clone but make it cute it gives me cute aggression it gives great readings my edition my copy has been trimmed and edged and i used a nice 10 millimeter corner rounder i feel like you need the chunky corner rounder i've seen people trim this and they use a, a, a smaller corner rounder and it looks a little more spiky and i'm like i mean obviously you do you but for me it needs the it, it adds to that softness that like comfort hugginess now because my birthday channel birthday is coming up i'm hoping i'll be able to spring for another copy and do a giveaway of a trimmed and modified version with a pouch for my my tarot channel birthday but it really depends on uh, a number of things so we shall see but i would like to do that again i know that a number of people have received those in my giveaways before oh my god it's hermy i remember telling simon of the hermits cave i'm like this is hermy and i love him and now he calls him hermy and i think a few of you do as well it's hermy it's the cutest like oh my god i cannot i know this card this card this deck inside out back to front i can close my eyes and i can see every single card it like what was it that anna astral lady tarot says there's the mood decks and then there's your what does she call it 
like when you can see you just know every single card this is one of those decks i mean there's a few of them in my collection now where i can literally picture every single card which i think is impressive like the sasarabito would be one um the numinous would probably be one the wild unknown would be one um like yeah the 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 jean noble uh the um uh i haven't quite got that with tom benjamin's one but yeah like the jean noble and the cbd must say which is a bit more easier to to remember but the osho zen is probably one of them like they're just wedged in my brain um okay and the final uh item of clothing winter clothing to keep you nice and toasty and to choose uh, the prompt is mittens and uh, this is uh, your travel slash to hand deck mini deck travel deck deck that you always have to hand or that you currently always have to hand um, for your like just in case or your impromptu readings um, these are the decks that I took with me there's two of them because I again I read in two different ways I do use them differently the two systems like the two systems but the two types of decks um and and this and actually one of them isn't even a smithweight it's just smithweight and has some smithweight undertones to it <laughs> um i took these two decks with me and let people pick which one they wanted me to read with um and this one i did a great reading for my sister back in may with this one and this is the tarot de, tarot de maria celia by leonard jim narciso who also created the um oh god why can't i remember the name of it it's like the like 90s teen kind of oh my god my i cannot my brain fog is so bad i can't remember things but um yeah so again this is a marseille it's just it's smaller it's got different coloration it's redrawing I, I'm not a fan of the fact that everyone is white and everyone is blonde in it. I don't know why that decision was made. I feel like they could have been. And I feel like it's because maybe yellow was one of the colours that have been chosen for the colour palette. And so yellow was the only logical choice for hair colouring rather than green or purple to keep the palette limited. But I would rather have seen green and purple hair than just everyone be blonde. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to colour, oh I'm just going the wrong way, colour them in, yeah, we'll see, come on, fuck yours little camera, but yeah look at that, I mean the face on this horse, he's like, mm -hmm. look at his face, focus camera, come on, damn you, look at his face, Oh my god, so it is, I do quite, I do, I do like the faces in it. They've all got like resting bitch face. I love the moon, but like the moon card is just generally always pretty cool, huh? And yeah, it's classic Marseille, but I did some great readings with this one. And it's easy because it's in a tin and it's small. The cardstock is, is feels thicker than my um, Morgan Greer in a tin and it's a little bit small. The cards are actually, I think, a little bit smaller than my Morgan Greer in a tin. But it might also be I've had that longer and so it's small supple because I've riffle shuffled it to Helen back. Um, who's, Hel who's Helen back? <laughs> Helen back. Um, and the other one is the, the Wild Unknown Pocket Oracle. Pocket Oracle, the Wild Unknown Pocket Tarot. Um, and this, ugh, the cards look on this I really like. I love this. I've used this more than the, the regular sized version. I have the indie version. The cardstock's quite thick and chunky. It could be a bit difficult to shuffle, especially because I've got a janky hand um, at the moment. So um, yeah, this was great. Didn't do as many, but not as many people would want it, weirdly. I don't, yeah, not as many people picked this one for reading. Um, and I don't know why, maybe it's because it didn't feel very summery to people and the coloration of this is very sort of golden and summery, I feel like, which is unusual, right? Because it's a pip deck. I mean, this is kind of pipish as well, but yeah. So it's interesting for me because I only had the indie version up until now for all these years. And so I didn't have the all of the coloration that was changed or the cards that were changed for the mass market version and it's got the mass market backs and this week i received my animal spirit pocket edition as well so i can't wait to read with those two together so yeah so those are my those were my go-to um i'm not really going anywhere over christmas well i'm not planning to so i won't be taking 
any decks out with me if i did i would probably switch it up and pull out my morgan greer in a tin i still want the smith white centennial in a tin but because i'm not going anywhere i can't really justify buying it i'm saying that i did buy this last year because i was like i needed it because it's cute because it's cute anyway so wow that was quite long so please do join in if you are so inclined i would love to see your answers hear your answers see your decks see what your base layers your ugly christmas sweater your winter coat your snow boots your hat your scarf your mittens what are they i will post all of the questions prompts and questions in the description box down below um, and if people do start doing responses to this i will try and do a playlist so people can go and find them all in one place fingers crossed we will see it might fall flat on its face, it might not. Um, but I'm hoping this is fun. I thought this was fun. This came to me at three o'clock in the morning and I was there with my phone at three o'clock in the morning, like blearily like trying to type into my phone in the middle of the night, the questions and the prompts, because I had to, I knew that if I left it until the morning, it would go out of my brain and I would forget it. So this was a, in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, I go typing in my sleep. Uh, yeah, it was in the middle of the night, uh, created tag. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, so I'm going to go because this is getting quite long and I want to keep this um, sh a little shorter than most of my usual videos. So yeah, um, have at it. I look forward to seeing your responses, your VRs, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao.